This is Illinois primary coverage from WCI3, your local election headquarters. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jessica Coons. Thanks for joining us. It is primary election night, and it was an election day unlike any other as the effects of coronavirus concerns trickled down to the polls. Yeah, today the governor confirmed what many feared a death in Illinois linked to coronavirus. It was a woman in her 60s from Cook County. There are now cases, at least 160 cases in the state, but the governor also said today democracy must continue. Health officials insisted you stay six feet away from others, particularly at the polls. As for today's election results, we've been tracking these for the last few hours. The biggest race, of course, the one for president, Donald Trump running for re-election, Illinois helping decide who will oppose him on the ballot in November. So let's take a look at the numbers. As of right now, this race has been called between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders for Illinois with Biden coming out on top. Still some numbers coming in, but again, the race has been called for Joe Biden. As for the president, he did not run unopposed in Illinois, but it was really no contest here. The race has been called for him as well against business, businessman Rocky De La Fuente. In the race for U.S. Senate, Dick Durbin did not have an opponent in the primary. He will, of course, have a Republican opponent come November. Taking a look with 76% of the precincts reporting, Mark Curran um, with a commanding lead over his other Republican challengers. To the U.S. House of Representatives, Republican Rodney Davis was unopposed in the primary. As for the 13th Congressional District race for the Democrats, let's take a look at what we've got so far. 60% of precincts reporting and Betsy Dirksen Londrigan with a commanding lead over Stephanie Smith, 78% to 22%. If that continues, it looks like Betsy Dirksen Londrigan will get to run against Rodney Davis again in the general election as she did just a few years ago. The 15th Congressional District is up for grabs. As Republican John Shimkus said last year, he would not seek re-election. It is a deep red district that has gotten plenty of national attention. What we do know right now is that Mary Miller has won the GOP primary earlier this evening. Vermilion County Treasurer Darren Duncan called her to concede. Uh, let's check in now on the Democratic side and who will be opposite her on the ballot. And taking a look with 71% of precincts reporting, this race really hasn't gotten any closer as these results continue to trickle in. Erica Weaver has pretty much held on to that lead all night, collecting now 51% of the vote. So let's check in now with our Capitol Bureau Chief, Mark Maxwell. He is live at the Miller Family Watch Party at their church tonight in Oakland. So Mark, what has the scene been like there tonight? I know it's quite subdued than what they had planned uh, certainly a few weeks back. Paul, it really is. Good evening from Oakland. Mary Miller watched the results come in with some close friends and mostly family. She does have a big family uh, downstairs in a basement in their hometown church here in Oakland. Not quite the party they planned, as you mentioned. Those bigger plans scuttled for now due to the coronavirus. But she did mention, uh, we just got a chance to speak with her just a moment ago. Her big win, it comes after those big household Republican names like Congressman Jim Jordan and Senator Ted Cruz endorsed her. She also won the support of the Farm Bureau not long after that. I asked her, what did it mean to have those big household names, those big heavy hitters backing you in this big Republican district? I hold the same values they have and I support the same agendas that they're promoting. So that's why they supported me. And then after they endorsed me, I started getting, um, you know, support from around the country. And that really helped. She also said she firmly embraces and supports President Trump. That's the strategy from here to November. Continue to support President Trump in a district that voted for him 71% in 2016. A uh, deep, the, the most Republican district in the entire state as well. She actually said she's not quite sure yet if or how she might go about joining the House Freedom Caucus, that group of uh, far-right conservatives in Congress, should she arrive there. If she does, she'd be the first Illinois uh, member of Congress to do so. She also still said they do hold, uh, hope to hold that election night party just at a later date so all of her supporters from around this big district with 33 counties and all can come and support her uh, as she continues to rally and campaign all the way through to the general election in November. Paul. All right, Mark Maxwell in Oakland tonight. Mark, thanks. Well, let's move now to the 16th district of the State House, which includes a portion of Iroquois County. That's where Democrat Yehiel Kalish is now running for a full term. He was appointed to the seat in January following the resignation of Lou Lang. As of tonight, the incumbent 
is behind 88% of precincts reporting. And Denise Wang Stoneback with the lead here, 44% of the vote several years ago. She founded a nonprofit to prevent gun violence, and she is ahead in the votes tonight. We'll keep an eye on this race as those numbers continue to come in. As for the 95th District State Representative seat, Avery Bourne looking to be reelected. She was the youngest member to be sworn into the General Assembly after the last election. More than half of precincts reporting here and Avery Bourne with a strong lead, 86% to Lawrence Oliver's 14%. And the winner of this race will face Democrat Chase Wilhelm in the fall. Let's move to the 109th District where uh, the new faces are running on both sides of the aisle. Only 47% of precincts reporting, but uh, Adam Niemerg is uh, in a clear lead there with 64% of the vote so far. The winner there will take on John Spencer in the general election. Let's move now to the state Senate district race in the 55th district. 65% of precincts reporting. That's where Darren Bailey is taking on Jeffrey Fleming. Again, 65% of precincts reporting there. Darren Bailey uh, with a commanding lead with 77% of the vote. Several questions on the ballot for voters today. One of those was in the Moroa Forsyth School District. They want to build a new middle school and repair the high school. The district looking to issue bonds for $33 million to pay for those costs. Right now, we have more than half of precincts reporting and 64% of voters saying yes so far to that new middle school, to those high school repairs. But again, still a lot of numbers to come in on this. Only half of precincts reporting so far. The Williamsville School District needs $40 million for upgrades to the high school, junior high, and Sherman Elementary School buildings. It's a yes or no question on the ballot tonight. 100% of precincts reporting voters said yes to this uh, ballot initiative overwhelmingly with 75% uh, of the vote. In New Berlin, yes or no to $39.5 million in bonds to build and equip a new school building and demolish the old one. 82% of precincts reporting and voters there said no. The Illini Central Community Unit School District looking to authorize $4 million to upgrade facilities there. 94% of precincts reporting, but it looks like this one is being called no. Voters turning that down, 57% of voters saying no to those $4 million in bonds. In Leroy, they are looking to build a new elementary school auditorium, plus upgrade some other buildings in the district, looking to issue bonds over $8.3 million. Almost all of precincts reporting, and at this point, voters saying yes, but as you can see, there are 90 votes to 67 votes, so this could come down to a few votes there, looking to issue $8.3 million in bonds in Leroy. In Vermilion County now, a yes or no vote here for a 1% sales tax to be used for school facility purposes, school resource officers, and mental health professionals. 100% of precincts reporting a uh, very close vote here. 51% of voters said no. 49% of voters said yes. Uh, just 112 vote difference there in Vermilion County where they said no. Obviously an extremely close vote there. Let's head to Vermilion County now. That's where we find WCIA3's Jennifer Jensen. She is live tonight in Danville. Uh, obviously voters said no to this uh, tax initiative. And Jennifer, you've been saying all night now that uh, you heard some mixed opinions. Obviously this was a very uh, close de uh, decision here. Yeah, Paul, it absolutely was. As you can see, these votes were neck to neck. I stopped by a polling place today over at the library here in Danville, and I talked to several voters, and many of them had very strong opinions on both sides of this. The increase would have been at different levels for each city and town in the county, but for example, in Danville, it would have raised the sales tax to 10.25%, and that would have tied the tax as one of the highest in the state. Those against it, like Danville's mayor, warned that this tax hike would make living and shopping in Vermilion County less enticing and it could encourage people to spend their money in other counties where the sales tax is lower. The money from this sales tax increase would have gone to school districts across the county. Several districts says they would have used that money to pay for infrastructure improvements and use it to better student education overall. Now, since the votes at the polls were so close, we do have to consider that the final results will also include write-ins as well as late arrival mail-in ballots and provisional ballots as well. The Vermilion County Clerk's website says those certified results will be available after March 31st. So we'll have to wait to see what that happens, what happens with that, especially since this vote was so close. Live in Danville, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA3, your local news leader. Yeah, Jennifer, that's, an, that's an, a great point to bring up right now because we have 
obviously no idea how many people stayed away from the polls today, particularly with coronavirus, how many people may have mailed in ballots even today. If you postmarked a ballot today yeah. and put it in the mail and it was postmarked by today, of course, that vote still counts. So we absolutely have to keep right. an eye on that. Thank you. And there's much. really no telling how many of those would come in later. So we'll have to see. Yeah, absolutely. Jennifer, thank you so much for that update. Now, of course, we have results from more races ahead on this primary and St. Patrick's Day. We will be right back.